Okay. So big hello to all of you. We are going to discuss another question on Ames pattern. And this question is based on reason assertion pattern. So here you have to A and B two statement and the A will be uh, when the first option will be when A and B both are correct and B explains the A. Second, A and B both correct but independently not related to each other. Third, only A correct and B wrong. Fourth, B correct and A wrong. Fifth, both correct. Both wrong, sorry. So, most common site for pseudo sister pancreas is below transverse mesocolon. Sister jajnasme is the treatment of choice. Pseudo sister pancreas actually is fibrous wall around the peripancreatic fluid collection. So, in severe pancreatitis, almost 30 40 percent patient fluid trickles out. It's in or in chronic pancreatitis, fluid comes out from the duct due to duct leak, trauma, injury, or rupture. So it's the pancreatic duct which leaks the fluid out in chronic pancreatitis. In acute, it's the inflammatory fluid. So fluid accumulates around the pancreas and we have a fibrous wall. So the fibrous wall forms after four weeks. So pseudocyst only develops after four weeks. Pseudocyst does not develop within four weeks. Before four weeks, we just call it peripancreatic fluid collection. And that's managed conservatively unless it gets infected. So peripancreatic fluid collection, if infected, you do aspiration. Take it out, drain it out. Otherwise, just manage conservatively. Either it disappears or a fibrous wall forms. When a fibrous wall forms, then you call it pseudocyst. So pseudocyst actually is the peripancreatic fluid collection having a fibrous wall. That fibrous wall is a reactionary wall. That's due to just an inflammatory reactionary wall that forms after four weeks. And it matures only after six weeks. So that's why surgery can only be done after six weeks. We never do surgery of pseudocyst within six weeks. Surgery should be done only after six weeks because the wall gets maturity to hold the suture. It becomes mature after six weeks only. So pseudocyst is a fibrous wall around the fluid of pancreas, peripancreatic fluid collection, which forms after four weeks. And the most common site is lesser sac behind the stomach. This is the most common site. Though pseudocyst can form right from diaphragm up to pelvis anywhere, the whole plane is one. But generally lesser sac, almost more than 80% pseudocyst, you get behind the stomach in the lesser sac. And the and then it can, uh, the two main complications, firstly, why you call pseudocyst or pseudocyst? No epithelial lining. It does not have epithelial lining. It's only lined by granulation tissue. So no epithelial lining in the pseudocyst, that's why it's called pseudocyst. And it only has granulation tissue in lining. So ultrasound, CCT. CCT is the investigation of choice. Ultrasound is the first investigation. And ERCP will tell you communication with the duct. Whether it is communicating or not. Communication with duct. In acute, they don't communicate. But in chronic pancreatitis and trauma, they do communicate. So in chronic pancreatitis and trauma, we order the ERCP just to see communication on this communication, no. But CT scan is the best investigation that shows the pseudocyst best with the wall thickness and the position and everything. So pseudocyst becomes mature after four weeks. I mean, fibrous wall, so you call it pseudocyst. It forms after four weeks and becomes mature after six weeks. So surgery can only be done after six weeks. Most common position, lesser suck. Two most common complication, infection. Infection is most common complication. Second, hemorrhage in the cyst. If you aspirate the cyst, either you find pus or you find hemolyzed blood. So pus or hemolyzed blood, because it, it can bleed, causing the damage to the vessel. But uh, we are not discussing that hemorrhage. The hemorrhage in the cyst, in, from the wall itself, the ooze from the wall, Hemorrhage inside the cyst is also a very common. Second most common complication. 
surgery normally we do around 8 to 12 weeks but cannot be done within 6 weeks and remember CEA is less less than 250 if it is more then think of mucinous cyst adenoma rather than pseudocyst so CEA should be less and then your pseudocyst so always when we operate you aspirate the fluid and send it for CA estimation and take a biopsy also mucinous cyst adenoma also present the same way the most common site is lesser sac that's why the treatment of choice is cystogastrostomy you anastomose the cyst with the posterior wall of the stomach here this is cystogastrostomy this is the most commonly done surgery and investigation choice called juras procedure J U A R S Z. And so here, first option is wrong. They are not below transverse mesocolon, they are in the lesser sac above transverse mesocolon. Second option is also wrong. Cystogesnosmy is not the treatment of choice, cystogastrosmy is. Cystogesnosmy is only done when the cyst is below transverse mesocolon. So in about 10% cases, cystogesnosmy may be required and the only indication of cystogesnosmy is a cyst below transverse mesocolon. That's the only indication, low-lying cyst. Any cyst above transverse mesocolon in the lesser sac should be treated by cystogastrostomy. So first option is wrong. Most common site is not below transverse mesocolon. It's in the lesser sac above transverse mesocolon. Second option is also wrong. Cystogastrostomy is the main treatment, not cystogastrostomy. So both options are wrong. So the answer, right answer is five. And um, this, so both wrong. Most common site, lesser sac. Cystogastrostomy is the treatment of choice. And this is a diagram. It's a very simple surgery. Can be done by open technique, laparotomy or laparoscopically. Now even endoscopic, Communication is also being made between stomach and lesser sac and the cyst. But endoscopic drainage is not as effective as open laparoscopic. So uh, this is another question based on reason, assertion and reason. And this is yielding because one positive and only 0.25 negative. So one should always attempt this kind of question.